yourself in the shoes of those soldiers like this is what like real like up close hand to hand combat is like is and can be versus like oh there's a dragon coming by and blowing shit up and it's really cool and it's awesome and people are burning blah 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 it's like Lord of the Rings like it's it's high fantasy battle and it was just a little less emotionally engaging if it was emotionally engaging though for me it was and I I totally disagree with with you guys the ladies of the room the ladies of the Westeros Gazette <laughs> that like I love the characters that were involved here and I consider Jamie to be in the top 5 of most important characters on the show like and I thought like they had Jamie on one side and they had Daenerys on the other side and this is the highest stakes battle we've seen yet I feel like Seth, you've been wanting to talk no, for a while. You no, it's not it. a big deal. Um, the showrunners talk about this in the in the post episode. They say this is the first time we've had a battle, and this is aside from from Jon Snow and and Ramsay, um, where two of the main players have been pitted against each other. And I'm taking it from the side, and clearly a, a different opinion in this room, aside from the ladies, is that we are basically, and I'm going to move us along a bit. We're basically Tyrion in this scene. He's looking on and he's seeing. Jamie and Bronn on one side, and then he's seeing his allegiance of Danny and obviously this dragon on the other side, and he knows the Lannister army uh, because they're the, 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 the family army, and, and he is torn. And again, as we've kind of said, season seven is for the actors. His facial expressions throughout that whole thing are just like, he's torn. He's, he's constantly at battle with himself. He doesn't know who to root for. Danny questioned his allegiance earlier on, and now he has to watch this whole thing unfold and he even looks at Jamie from that brotherly instinct and is like flee you idiot like get the fuck out of here and you see him just be so mentally and emotionally torn between these two sides he's not ready to have i don't think Tyrion's ready to have the death of Jamie on Agreed. his conscience so know. any chance in hell that Tyrion is who knocked Jamie off the horse no no, no chance. It was, was a full size Bron. Bron okay. definitely knocked him we've off. We've talked the about Bron, and I feel like we've even talked about. Um, I disagree. It was Dickon. No, Dickon. no. no. Yeah. I can I can make the claim for Bron right now. There's a point where he gets knocked down. He after uh, Drogon just fires and then whips the shit with his tail uh, out of the scorpion, and Bron looks at this white horse, and then the white horse comes with a guy who's not clad in armor, who Dickon was, and. Braun is the one who yeah, takes but, him off. Yeah, no, the horse. dead. Braun is the one. But who I watched it Jamie again, and the, the dudes, they both look like they have armor on. That's the only kicker. But and they it don't. Even we will, be, we will like, absolutely <laughs> find out next. I'm next pretty episode. sure okay. they do. So to back up like a second, yeah. before <laughs> Braun got to the tool, the weapon, scorpion. Right? scorpion. scorpion. That's the a coolest cool name. Weapon That's a cool ever. fucking name. The scorpion. <laughs> And, like, that whole, like, terrible scene where the Darth Rocky um, cuts off the horse's leg oh, and he falls. That was so the only reason I can, like, bring this up is because we it was, like, just on in the background. And I noticed it. They spent a long time, and by a long time, I mean, like, almost three seconds, which for Game of Thrones, I feel like it's a long time. Showing the money bag that fell off of yeah. Bronn's hip it's a on huge, the ground. It's a great point. It's a huge piece of character development for Bronn because up to this point, I think we've always seen Bronn as someone who's motivated by money. But then all of a sudden, what happens when Bronn's motivated by something that's not Friendship. Okay. money? So, so maybe that's it. So I was like, Friendship. they had to have shown that for a reason because they showed the money. They showed the look on Bronn's face, they showed the money, and then they showed the look on his face again. And I was like, that has to mean something, and but I don't know at, what. At this the, point, <laughs> at, the front, at the front of the episode, he's even talking about gold not being enough and wanting a castle. And was it for gold, or was it for his own self-preservation? I think that's where we're at with Bronn right that's now. That's a really... I, 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 I to, to tie together what Seth was saying with what Kendall was just saying, too, was like, he looks at the he looks at the gold, he looks at the, and he looks at the horse, and then he like gets on the horse, and he chooses the horse which means he probably chose to go save Jamie, which brings in John's point of saying, like, you know, he's going to do something other than, he's going to choose something other than the gold this time around. Have we ever known him to do that? No, but this time he chose friendship. He chose loyalty to Jamie because he knows that maybe, you know. It, well, I still think it was call. self-preservation, though. I don't think yeah. it was just like Jamie. But, yeah, he's he's choosing not to go for the gold because he knew he might die if he does that, so he's got to go try to kill this fucking dragon. Jesus. Um, um, okay, so... I'm going to wrap up our discussion of the episode because there's a couple other segments that I want to get into. We could sit here all night. We could have an entire show just on the Lou Train battle. It was fantastic. One of the better. And overall, 
this seems like one of the better episodes of Game of Thrones. In in recent memory, maybe it's got to be in the top five, you know, of, of best episodes that we've seen. Okay, but uh, I want to get to a segment that I really enjoy that we didn't get to last week. I want to talk about the honorable not mentions. Like, who did we not see? The Hound. The Hound. <laughs> the Hound. Where is the fucking the hound, hound? And the Brotherhood Without Banners. Are yeah, how have they not made it to the North yet? You know, what's going on? Um... I know it seems like based on the like next week on Game of Thrones, is it Eastwatch? I think Eastwatch East is gonna Watch be like a sea. really big yeah, it's gonna be a really big plot point, so maybe somehow on their way to the north they get there and maybe we finally see like <laughs> Gendry. He's just you still think, rowing, like, working out the shoulders. You think that like the shoulders are like, Why the fuck is everyone so obsessed with Gendry? We're not bringing him back. We did not sign that actor. Yeah. <laughs> like it's not happening. Um, let it go. Yeah, just let it go. Uh, so, so, yeah, so the, where's the Hound? Where's the Brotherhood Without Banners? Um, and then this week, too, we didn't see uh, Jorah and Sam. You know, what's going on in the Citadel and, and what's their next move? In fact, where did we leave that? Do you guys remember? Probably because they spent way too long showing him in a past episode. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, no, he, that was he's gross. unrolling yeah. those uh, anti ant squirrel, uh, scrolls. Yeah. Those yeah. mite scrolls. Jorah's on his way back to Danny. Sam's cleaning up some old scrolls. and they got to be together, though, don't you think? Like, no. 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 It feels like they're journeying together. Jorah is on his way back to Dragonstone. Which is going to be great when he gets there and Danny's not striking there. up a romance yeah. with uh, John. Oh. Let's just yeah. say, I want to point this out. So, John took over uh, for Jorah Mormont as Lord Commander of the Night's Watch. Jor. Jor. Or, sorry, Jor. Jor. Uh, he has Jorah long, Mormont's father. He has Longclaw, which is the Mormont Valerian sword, and now he has Danny. He has taken three things that Jorah wants. Can you guys imagine that? Oh. Imagine this in the uh, Road Rules uh, Challenge or whatever we're talking oh, about. They would be going head to head in that elimination to send yeah. somebody <laughs> home. Seth, you just blew my mind. Imagine. Okay, so oh I'm going to give credit God. also to Reddit because I did see that there. So not my own theory. That's all right, Got to throw that out there. That's like, that really blows my mind. Like, imagine Jorah meeting Jon Snow and he's like, oh, you stole my girl. That sucks. Wait, where'd you and get that my sword? sword. <laughs> my dad gave it to you because he's proud of you? He ostracized me. <laughs> like, oh, shit. That's Same way mean, that that's somehow mean. Dickon is the, the favorite son of Randall Tarly versus Sam. Look yeah. at that. In oh, the same my. boat. Yeah. So, so one thing I'm really curious about that we didn't see is like the Euron Grey Worm end up at Casterly yeah. Rock. Another I great one. Yeah, because yeah. I I think that if if we're playing it real in realism, Grey Worm can't make it out of Casterly Rock, or he can't leave. I guess maybe yeah. he could just hold. They hold up in there, but you bite your tongue. He is gonna make it out of there. Well, no. oh. well they have I, to because Missande and Danny have many things to talk about. Yeah. The fact that we didn't see yeah. Grey Worm die means I think he's got a real shot of getting out of there at this point. You know. Well, well, was, who, I don't who, think I don't think Huron was there to destroy. Was, yeah, no, no, no. The silence was the there. Silence was there. The so silence was, was there. there. That means Huron was there. Yeah, but fair point. She, he's not trying to invade Castle of the Rock after they take. No, it. he's no. just no. holding them ships. there. Yeah. Just holding them there, right? But it wasn't. They're not out there to kill them. They're gonna go take. They're gonna go no, kill them. No, later no. The idea is that. Back. So it's a giant game of chess at this point, right? And I think that's the the uh, metaphor we're trying to play up the entire season. It's like. How can I hold your knight with my bishop? Yeah, yeah, um, that's true. So Euron is going to hold the Unsullied at Casterly Rock. So there's a fucking dragon coming from the other side. That's right. Yeah, what piece on the chessboard is a dragon? It's the queen. But there it's are like, like three four queens, queens yeah. out there at this point. I just want to see what three dragons will do. One dragon did all of that, and we don't even have the other two yet. All right, so real quick jump back. I wanted to see that dragon burn everything. Like, not just not just the Lannister <laughs> army, but Jaime and all of the Dothraki and everything else, too. Like, uh, I wanted to just see it. Dominant. We do have to mention the fact that the dragon didn't bob and weave a little bit better. Yeah. I mean, I thought we learned that lesson hey, he from missed, the Battle of the Bastards. And then he missed one time. arrow. Yeah. He missed one arrow, so he did better than Rickon. Yeah. Oh, that scene, too, where the dragon, oh. like, puffed out his chest and has, like, quadruple armor when he tried to shoot the regular <laughs> arrows, though. Jesus Christ, those things are... Arrow attack uh. was useless. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to move on to the last part of our show. As you know, at the last part of our show, I will present a scenario to the gang here. Today we're going to have teams. In the interest of time, we're going to have teams. Uh, our two teams are going to be John and Joe... Ooh. Beth and Seth, just because I love saying those two names together, really? and then we need a combo name. Well, three really, three teams. Really left her hand in there. Three, yeah. Beth. Beth. three Beth teams, and then Kendall and I will be a team as well. And so today's game is going to be, and this was submitted by a uh, viewer by the name of Ryan. 
uh, to our uh, to our email, which you can too. And how do you do it, Joe? How do they reach out to us? Geeks at h o t y b dot co dot co. Geeks? That is how you reach out to us. You can give us a scenario that we will read live here on the air, or just give us an idea or a, uh, okay. a theory to yeah. talk through. They get it. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. Shameless plug. Shameless plug. All right. Plug. So getting into it today, as submitted by listener Ryan. If you had to build your war council, just like, uh, or just a council in general, just like all of the kings on the show have done, Tyrion has become the hand of the king to Daenerys. Okay, and it looks like these guys all have notes. Kevin, I think we're <laughs> I fine. Say, we came, we came down, they down they so we don't talk. We about came it. so is a, prepared. Is this a draft? I was not or is it just no. like the oh, notes. Should it be a draft? Yeah, those drafts. Okay, it's gonna be a draft, guys. Oh, yeah, it's gonna be a draft. I like that. Wow. And Kendall, Kendall and I are just judges. Is this a, <laughs> so? Is this a, like yeah, a back judges. and forth? And then yeah. stealing again? Yeah, I'll give you that. I will, yep, yep. All right, so it's just two teams. You guys, it's going to be picking teams at recess. But you have to pick your council. And yeah. with that, you also have to pick a captain or your hand. You, the, who's going to be your hand of the king, okay? Um, so it can't be a mythical creature. Can't no dragons. Dragon. Can't no, no, no dragons. No dragons. It has to be someone that could sit at the table with you and have a conversation. Keep and, that in mind. And can it be a king? It can be a king. Okay. Yes, it can be a king. Um, and it can be anyone on the show, living or dead, but... In the run of the show that we've seen, so yeah, right. All right. Kendall, you and I are just going to be the judges because we don't have notes. I didn't anticipate all of this pre-thought. So as they're doing I know, that, you didn't even let me know so I could come prepared on this. I'm sorry. So as they're sort of they're they're cons- they're counseling no. with each other on this, we need some like oh, Jeopardy could, theme we music could argue here. We're pretty much ready. Bum, bum, bum. Okay. Beth and I are going to pull off the side. We're ready. We got this. I'm pretty on point. I'm going to stop the recording for a second. <laughs> and we're back. Okay, with the magic of radio, we are able to rejoin the group here so that we can figure out who the council is now. Remember, this is going to be a team Joe and John versus team Seth and Beth. That's right. The old guard versus the newcomers. Oh, <laughs> That's right. The Night's Watch versus the Wildlings. I don't know why you guys Wait. are the Wildlings. No, but you Actually, guys are as scrappy. Long as, as long as I can be You're Tormund, like, I'm yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 That's yeah. cool. Yep. I'll All right. take it. Give me Speaking some of Wildlings, we haven't seen them in a while. Yeah, hey, we haven't seen Wildlings in a while. Hey, honorable non-mention. I All think right. they're going to have a big episode. So, huge episode. the way that this is going to work, we are going to have a back and forth uh, recess draft style, style draft, right? Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so we will start with, and we're going to start with the hand of the king. We're going to start with the number one, uh, the numero uno. Uh, Can you come to figure out who this first? Right hand man. So, Kendall. Rock, paper, scissors. Right. Rock, paper, scissors Rock, paper, scissors between oh, Joe and Beth. The there we go. Couple. One best of one, so we're going the second pick. So cool. Don't oh, suck. Yeah. Ready? Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. shoot. Oh, ah, oh, son of a bitch. I wanted second pick. <laughs> Joe, second just pick. for our listeners, Joe chose scissors and Beth chose paper. What does he play on the scissors? All right. Who is your hand player, of the king so. for Team Joe and John? John. Jon Snow. Jon Snow. Mm. Jon Snow, Hand of the King. Give me a oh, no. reason like why Jon Snow. Snow. Why did you pick Jon Snow for well, Hand of the King? he's died once already. <laughs> and Fair points. Gives solid advice. It's just... And, and he knows what we're actually facing. So in the, in the way that I see it too, today, the North, as a unit, has chosen him to be their king and leader, even though he's a bastard. So he's a unifier of the people. People will listen to him, including us as co-kings. I love it. All right, We're Team Seth and Beth. All right, the so game. there was there was a little bit of uh, a little bit of argument here, little uh, non give and take. Um, <laughs> Whoa, who no, didn't no, no, no. give? It was, we just disagreed. Some on this. infighting on who that. Who didn't yeah. give and who didn't our, take? Our, our king queen style did not match up. Um, I am taking the hand, and I am saying that it's going to be Tywin Lannister. Okay. And this is a power move. I understand former that... Former actual hand, right? Right. To, I understand that his ambitions, schemes, objectives, goals, all of that is somewhat wonky and yeah. not always uh, desirable, but he does... I appreciate you accepting my concerns. That was very kind right. of you. Yeah, of course, I listen. Uh, gentlemen out there, listen to all ladies. Um, anyways... What I was going to say Shout is out that to chivalry. Uh, yes, I love how that's people say like it's not even her husband's advice. No, it comes from Joe. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, 
What I will say, though, is that he is arguably, in this game, despite at this point being dead, he is arguably the most sound person, both from a political standpoint and a uh, war standpoint, uh, the most sound knowledge and experience. And I think that translates really well, and you can see that in how Jamie and Cersei...